Now we're joined by Giants offensive lineman, free agent edition, Jermaine Illuminor. Jermaine, nice to meet you, man. How are you? I'm amazing now. I'm happy to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Let's start at the beginning. How did you fall in love with American football, having being someone that grew up just outside of London? Shoot, watching the Giants. Watching them um, at Wembley Stadium play the Dolphins. You know, I tell everyone I was flicking through the TV trying to find the Arsenal game, and I came up on this game at Wembley Stadium. I was like, what is this? And it was Giants and the Dolphins. It was Mike Strahan, OC. I think the QB for the Dolphins at the time was Chad Pennington, if I'm correct. I think Cleo Lemon got some was, time in that game Cleo, time. Okay. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure because I was more focused on the Giants and that helmet, that blue helmet. Just That stuck out to me the most. And I think that was the coolest thing ever. And still to this day, I think the Giants helmet is the coolest um, helmet in the NFL. So the fact that I get to finally put that on is really exciting for me. And then you moved to New Jersey. Yeah. So they end up being your hometown team. Is mm -hmm. that the team you rooted for when you came here to play high school football and stuff? I, it's, I'm sure some people are going to get a little upset with me, but I actually rooted for two teams. It was the Giants and it was the Eagles. And it was because the Eagles had a really cool helmet at the time, too. I did not know a single thing about them, but that green helmet, like the wings, was really cool to me back then. But the Giants helmet was number one, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, in high school, you wrestled too, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how much did that help you with offensive line play? Oh, and a lot of offensive linemen say it, it really helps. Yeah, it was huge. Just like center of gravity, balance, core, you know, all those three things are huge as offensive linemen. You know, you got to have balance out there at tackle because you're going against guys that are way quicker than you and more athletic than you. And then at guard also, you got to have a low center of gravity because those guys are shooting out low and quick. And so you got to be able to counter that and get your hands on them quicker. And in wrestling, it's all hand fighting. And I believe that's what offensive line players too. As a tackle, it's all hand fighting. You know, you got to get your hands on them before they get their hands on the um, you. At guard, you know, it's real quick. And it's you got to be precise and on point every single time, especially against the D tackles in this league and the D tackles we play this year. So all the lessons I learned from wrestling helped me translate that to the field and you know become the player I am today. Talk wrestling, I'm assuming, since you were trying to find the Arsenal game, you mm -hmm. also played soccer growing up, correct? Yeah, huge Arsenal fan. And then the footwork probably applies too, right? Mm -hmm. I think that helped me too as a tackle because me being as big as I am, you know, people think that I'm more suited to play guard and that's always been something that's followed me around the league. And when they see me out there on the field playing tackle, it kind of amazes them because like a guy as big as you shouldn't be moving like that. And I've never really understood that. I think I'm an athlete, but soccer really helped me with the footwork and at tackle specifically you got to have really good feet to counter what the defensive end is doing like we play michael parsons twice a year and he's a freaking hell of a player but you got to have the feet in order to keep up with him and it's kind of it's like a dance partner in a sense you know you got to be able to keep up with their movements and match their movements so you can block them all right we'll get to your position flex in a second but you've mentioned a couple times osu manure was your favorite player growing up yep you wear number 72 mm -hmm. you called him already said all right you have permission you can wear 72 with the giants mm -hmm. how did your relationship with osu manure grow obviously you both have connections to england and things mm -hmm. like that but how did you guys develop such a tight relationship so the big thing was me being from england i've always wanted to host a camp over there and so last year i was able to go back over there to where i grew up in camden and have a camp and then the following day I went to Ephel Bodgers camp and OC was there and I finally got to meet him. You know, we had talked online a bunch, but it was my first time really getting to meet him and, you know, to see him and the type of person he is. And, you know, he's everything about him is you love it. You know, he's just such a just a down to earth human being. He only cares about doing what's best for everyone else. And, you know, that's the type of person I want to be like. And I really want to follow in his footsteps. You know, I want to be a great player and then be great off the field as well and help children and, you know, help bring this sport to other countries and really grow the sport internationally. And he's doing an amazing job of that right now in Africa. And he's grown the sport too. And, you know, he's really an ambassador for this game. And that's what I hope to be too. So he's kind of like an idol for me. And I want to follow suit and do exactly what he did. Now you've talked about how you were a little late to football in terms of playing, right? So mm -hmm. You drafted fifth round, right? Yep. And you were considered a developmental player, not like every college player is not trying mm -hmm. to develop when they get to the pros, right? And then you hooked up with Carmen Brasillo yep. in New England. Dante Skarnecki was there too. Not, not not a bad guy to learn from, by the way. Not at all. Talk about how Coach Brasillo, who was now the Giants offensive line coach, mm -hmm. developed you and what areas of your game specifically do you really think he's helped you improve yeah. in your trip through the NFL? So, I mean, it's, everyone can see my first five years in the NFL were kind of iffy like to me I think they were really mediocre and just terrible and you know I'll be honest about that I, I think I sucked those first five years and um, I got to be around Carm my I got around Carm after my third year in the NFL if I remember specifically and you know he had just got to the Patriots and I did too and so our relationships has been building every single season 
And for Carm, he's just always believed in me and believed in my potential and believed in what I could do on the field. And when I finally got to Vegas, when I somewhat figured it out and, you know, my first season there was iffy. You know, I got some starts at right guard, but then I eventually lost that position. But then he became the offensive line coach my second year in Vegas. And he just instilled that belief and confidence in me where I could go out there and do what I needed to do. And obviously, I had to better my way up. I started as a training camp as a fourth string right tackle, but he gave me the opportunity and the belief that I could go in and win that starting job. And I eventually did. And during the season, I had to learn every single week because as a starter, it's completely different than being a backup or a role player. You have to bring your A game every single week and you have to improve every single week because if you don't, then the person in front of you is going to either take your job or the guy who's going against you is going to embarrass you. And so Karm really helped me become a pro and become a starter and learn what it means to be a starter. And then last season two, I feel like I made a huge step as well just because Karm just – Every single week just told me how much he believes in me. And I feel like as a player in the NFL, you need someone who believes in you as much as Carm does. And that does – that I think as an offensive lineman in general, it just says a lot for you having the belief of your own line coach to go out there and know that he's going to have your back regardless of what happens. But he's going to put you in the best position to succeed. And that's what Carm is. He's going to put you in the best position to succeed. And he's also going to love you and give you everything you need as an offensive lineman. It's, you know, you give everything to him, he's going to give everything back to you. And he's going to push you towards greatness and – push you towards your goals and your potential. And I think that will be huge here and it's going to be real beneficial. You talked about the belief part of it, the love part of it, but you also mentioned on the media call, the detailed technical part of his coaching that you mm -hmm. really liked that made you better. What are some of those technical detail things that you really think you've refined mm -hmm. that helped you take those type of big jumps you've talked about in the last two years? Yeah, I think every offensive lineman isn't the same. Every offensive lineman has that one thing about them that makes them stand out that got them to the NFL. Sure. You know, AT is not like Evan Neal. I'm not like AT. I'm not like Evan Neal. Like, we all have our game. Um, we all have things about us that got us to this position. And I think with Carm, he's real technical where he knows what you're, what you're good at and what you can improve on. And he's going to help you get better at things you're really good at, but then also improve the things you're not good at, whether it's hand placement, whether that's, you know, eye coordination, whether that's just – your feet, you know, making your feet more balanced, whether that's your core, whether that's just knowing the guy you're going against. And then to talk about the schematic side of things, he's going to help you know where you're going, know who you're blocking at all times. So when you're out there, you're never second guessing yourself. And a lot of schemes and a lot, a lot of offenses are pretty hard in the NFL. Yeah. But to have a guy like Carmen who can break it down to a T and make it easier for you takes a lot of weight off your shoulder. And I think that every offensive lineman in that room is going to benefit from that. And having a guy like Carm who can make the game easier for you so you can go out there and not worry about your job and you can just go out there and play free. Because at the end of the day, I believe that if you play free as an offensive lineman, you're going to play really well. You made a great point. I thought that every offensive lineman is a little bit different and they have something else is what makes them special and what made mm -hmm. them good enough to be an NFL player. Mm -hmm. What part of that game is that for you? I think just my confidence. I'm really confident in myself. And that comes from me being a rock bottom and dealing with depression and dealing with little things that kind of, you know, on the way to where I'm at now that I had to battle through. And I was able to recover from all of that, from, you know, the coaches who I had around me to, you know, my mental coach that I have now. And so my thing is confidence. There's no one in the NFL that I believe I can't block. I, I believe I can block whoever, whether that's TJ Watt, whether that's Michael, whether that's, um, you know, Cam Haywood whether that's um, the D tackles in Philly. Like, I believe I can block anyone. And that is huge as the offensive lineman because you have to have the belief that you can block whoever is in front of you. They're going to be better athletes than you. They may be stronger than you. I feel like I'm stronger than everyone, if I'm being honest, because I, I put pride in my strength. But there's always going to be someone that's a better athlete than you. And you have to have that belief that you're going to go out there and you're going to do your job and you can do your job to the highest ability and you're going to win. And so me is confidence and it's also just my determination. I'm determined to be the best in my position. And I feel like I've been saying, I've said it a lot. I'm just hitting my prime now and I'm really excited to see the player I'm going to become in this offense and for this team. And, and I think the sky's the limit, just not, just not for me, but for everyone on the offensive line and this team in general. And I'm really excited to just be a small part of that. We talked about refining the technical parts of the game on the field, but based on the answer, it sounds like you spent a lot of time trying to refine the mental approach to the game and the emotional mm -hmm. approach to the game. Mm -hmm. How big of a part of this has that been for you the last couple of years and how have you kind of gone about that? Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in being an NFL offensive lineman is 10% physical, 90% mental. The mental game is such a huge aspect of this game that people don't really, you know, they don't really know. 
Like you have to deal with social media. You have to deal with the media. You have to deal with the pressure of being an offensive lineman. And, you know, you can be strong. You can be a crazy athlete. You can run a four, five, four, six, four, seven as a NFL um, athlete in general. As an offensive lineman, you can run a four, nine, a five, zero, you know, throw up 225, 50 times. But if you don't have the mental side of things sorted out, then you're going to go out there and, and you're not going to play at your highest level and play at the, at the um, ability you've been blessed with. And so for me, the mental side was always the biggest part because at times I lost confidence in myself. At times I didn't know if I was good enough. Um, at times I just didn't know if I belonged to the NFL. And so this journey for me has been a long one, but it's also been a really rewarding one to see where I've come from to get to this point now to play for this team and this organization. And to be where I'm at mentally is huge for me. And I believe that everyone's struggling at with something, but the sooner you realize that and the sooner you can admit that is when you can really take that next step of becoming who you want to become, whether that's off the field, on the field, it doesn't matter. That's just life in general. And I think that's what separates me from a lot of players. It's just that mentally, I'm, I feel like I'm untouchable now. I feel like I'm at the best I've ever been mentally because of my mental coach, because of my belief in myself now. And that's why I feel like I'm going to come here and really reach the heights I, I know I'm capable of um, reaching. And, you know, I, like I said, I want to be the best, whether it's a guard, whether it's an attacker, I don't really care. I just want to help the team win. Um, and so whatever position I'm playing, I'm going to play that at the highest level and reach those goals and accolades and everything and help this team take that next step and get back to those winning ways that this franchise is used to having. Can you take those lessons you learned as a young player mm -hmm. and go talk to guys like John Michael Schmitz, guys like Evan Neal, the other young offensive linemen 100%. on this team that, look, it's one of the toughest. You're playing against the best athletes in the world, and you got to mm -hmm. block them one-on-one. -on -one. Going backwards, and they're going forwards. It's a really yep. tough job. You're, you, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. How much can you take those lessons and help those other young players deal with some of the challenges that they're going to deal mm -hmm. with as young players? Well, I said it before. Evan Neal getting thrown into the fire as a rookie, switching from left tackle to right tackle is hard. If you watch me in my rookie year, I sucked. I was terrible. I was on Limo Joseph's Top 100, and I was getting steamrolled into the dirt. <laughs> Man, I'm never going to remember. I'm always going to remember that because that was my welcome to the NFL moment. And playing as a rookie in this league, in this division, going against the guys he goes against is hard. And even JMS, you know, you're a rookie getting thrown into the fire. As an offensive lineman, it's the hardest position to play as a rookie is offensive line because of all the things that are being thrown at you left and right, especially as a center, especially as a tackle, especially as a guard. You have to be able to go in there right away and deal with all the flying bullets right in front of you and be able to, you know, focus on what you need to focus on even though everywhere else it's a freaking battlefield it's crazy out there everything's just you see people getting thrown around people getting ran over it's a common it's, storm yeah, a it's, bit, right? it's crazy and so you have to be able to separate what you did in college to what you have to do in the nfl now and i think it's impressive as hell that jms was able to go out there as a rookie last year as a center that's to me that's all the position line on the offensive line because you have four of the guys that are dependent on you to put them in the right position to succeed uh, you have to be able to make the mic point you know call the slides um tell them what they're doing run blocking wise you have to do so much there's so much on your plate that you have to be able to put everything aside take a deep breath and be like okay look mike's there we're going here and there's just so much you have to do and even with evan's point he's going to get tremendous talent week in and week out moving positions and you know, for me, I feel like those guys could use a vet in the room who just instills confidence in them. Is going to tell them, hey, look, I believe in you. I'm here for you. And I was in your position one time. Like like I said, my rookie year, I sucked. It, I sucked my first five years in the NFL. It took me until year six in the NFL to really figure it out. And that's when I had the breakthrough. And that's my first year as a true starter. And I just finished year seven and I'm still learning. And so I think a vet presence will be good for the O line room. And I'm the vet in the room now. You know, I'm only 29 years old, but, you know, now I'm that vet, quote unquote. And so, you know, my goal and my job is to hopefully be a leader in that room and give the guys that confidence that if they listen to me and just believe in me, that I help them on the field. Like, I'm here to help. I'm here to help both of those guys. I'm here to help AT. I'm here to help Runyon. Like, I think that this O line has a lot of potential. And, I hopefully I can be a small part of that to help everyone reach that potential. And even if they're at the top of the game, know that, hey, there's still a level you can reach. Like there's no, like it's not zero to 100. Like there's always level 101, 102, 103. Like you're never ever going to be at the top because there's always another level that you can reach. And that's why I truly believe.
All right, final topic. Let's talk about the position flexibility. You've mentioned it a couple times. Mm-hmm. You've played all four positions. Mm-hmm. Your most common position has been right tackle with, I think, right guard kind of right behind that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you spent a lot of time at left tackle, too, for a few games last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Are you more comfortable? Let's do right, left first. More comfortable right side, left side? Does it matter to you at all at nah, this point in your career? I'm comfortable starting. That's all I care about, <laughs> starting. That's what I'm comfortable doing. So as long as I'm starting, I don't care what position I'm playing. I just want to be able to help the team win. So right tackle... Left guard, right guard, I don't care. I just want to play. So I guess that answers my second question already, but I'll ask it anyway. So they tell you week one, we need you to step in and start at right guard, even though you've been the starting right tackle the last two I'm years. There. You're cool. I do not care as long as I'm starting. And you think you're just as good at both spots? 100%. I'm going to get everything I got. I mean, it's my confidence. Like, I'm going to work. If they tell me you're a guard, I'm going to work off offseason, and I'm going to become the best guard. And in my mind, I'm going to become the best right guard in the NFL. That's just the type of player I want to be and the type of person I am. I, I'm always going to believe I can be the best in the NFL. If they tell me, hey, you're a left guard. Okay, I'm going to work off offseason. I'm going to be the best left guard in training camp. I'm going to get to the season, and I'm going to be the left, best left guard in the NFL. That's just my belief in myself, and that's why I'm coming to the season believing. I want to be the best player in my position, whether that's left guard, right guard, right tackle. I could care less. I just want to start. And I'm going to put everything into that position and become the best. Like Every single year, I look at that all pro list, and I'm like, I know I can be there. I know I can be there. I know I can be there. I look at the, all, I look at the pro bowl list. I'm like, I know I can do that. I know I can do that. And now it's kind of like you're with a franchise where you can really accomplish that and where all the odds are on you. So why not? Is that one of the reasons you chose the Giants? Because they told you, look, maybe we can't promise you where you're going to start here, but mm-hmm. you're going to play for us, and we have confidence that you can plug in wherever we need you. Mm-hmm. I, The main reason why I chose the Giants is because I see the potential. I remember watching them two years ago playing the Vikings during the playoffs, and I remember seeing how fun it looked just out there. Like I've, I haven't had the most fun in my career, but you know I'm here now, and... I want to play for a team that's just fun. They're out there. They're smiling. They're a lot of things. They're just smiling, whooping butt. And that's the type of player I want to be in, the type of offense I want to be in. And, you know, at times there were that, that last year, but obviously there was missing pieces. And, you know, I know Runyon spoke about it, and like he wants to be a part of that missing solution. I hope to be a part of that as well. And I hope that I can come to that room and just, you know, improve everything and just help with everyone around that. But, you know, the biggest part of that too is just all the eyes that the Giants have on them. Like everything that you do is under a microscope. And, Everything you do is watched to a T. You can have 60 good plays and one bad play, and all everyone's going to talk about is that one play. And all I, over social yeah, media the next I, day. And <laughs> I, could, I could care less about that because I know what type of player I am. And, you know, my goal here is to reach those those um, heights as offensive linemen, but also elevate this team too and help them get to where I believe they can be. All right, final question. Look into the camera. Tell fans when you're on the field and they're watching you play offensive line, wherever that might be on the line on mm-hmm. Sundays, what are you best at? What are you bringing on the field? Having fun and smiling and energy and confidence. There's no one in the NFL that I believe I can't block. It doesn't matter who it is. I know I can block whoever they put in front of me, and I'm going to show that on Sundays, and I believe I've showed that the last two years, and I'm going to keep climbing and keep improving as offensive lineman and and be the best at my my position, whichever position that is. I could care less. I just want to be out there playing, having fun. Jermaine, nice to meet you, man. This is a pleasure. Thank you very much. Welcome to Big Blue, man. I'm happy to be here. Jermaine Illuminor, newest member of the New York Giants offensive line.